Good morning. The mass intention is for Mildred Call, requested by Bobby Cancereri. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We begin the third week in this joyous season of Easter, and especially today we hear about how to respond to the risen Savior as true witnesses of his mission in our time, and to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries that us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brother and sister, to pray for me to the Lord. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, who with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Grant this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and ask that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand, through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Answer me, O oh my just God. You who relieve me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. O Lord, know that the Lord does wonders for in upon us. You put gladness into my heart. As 
soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, our Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine on. reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, but not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why, do you, and why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. That it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous, for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about, about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning, everyone, on this beautiful Sunday morning. 
another day to say hallelujah because Christ has risen and we're in his joy once again. Today, we hear again a lot about sin and about forgiveness and turning ourselves to Christ. And what we have here in our gospel today, we see the disciples in this story. Uh, they've been through a lot, and they don't know where they are. And we ourselves find ourselves in kind of that same situation very, very often. You know, we may have had someone in our lives who we love very much, someone we thought so very much of. We admired, the, admired them. We reached out to them. We counted on them for their help in our daily situations. Or it could have just been a close friend someone whose life suddenly changed for some reason. Maybe it was just through marriage or a job change that took them away or something similar. But again, this may have been someone in our lives who we relied on so much. And we found they were always there for us in whatever situation that occurred in our lives. And we knew that if something happened to us, we knew we can turn to them, we could ask them for help, and they would help us find our way through that. We gave them, and we had so much trust in them, we had this level of comfort with them. And we probably entered into this really loving relationship that was built on that love and much trust in that person that we knew whatever we gave them, they would help us, and they would help us move on. And in some cases, that trust, that level of love is so much, we want to pattern our own lives after what they're doing and what they've done. And we'll set up all our plans to move forward according to this. Our life's then becomes really so dependent on those people being there for us. But what happens when that suddenly changes, when they're no longer there? You find yourself in this confused situation. You become frightened, and you don't know where to turn. You know, I recall as a 16-year-old child, you know, going through high school, I'm looking at those years of graduating, moving on from high school to something else in life, looking for that change in life. And my father suddenly became sick. And in two weeks, he passed away. And that was certainly a blow for me. But as the days went on and the months went on, you know who it really took its toll on? It took a toll on my mother, who had been with this man for 30-some years of her life at that point. You know, I was the youngest of five, so I was the last one to get out of the house. And that's the feeling we can get into when we have someone we trust, as the disciples trusted God or Christ at that time so much. They were looking for this change to come from him. You know, we heard the same situation last week in the gospel of John that the disciples, they were frightened. You know, they felt this was the one person that was going to bring about that life-changing experience to free them from this bondage that was being held over them by the Roman leaders. But with Jesus' death, this, they felt, had all ended for them. See, the disciples, they had forgotten the words that Jesus had told them about his resurrection beforehand. They had lost faith in the person of Jesus in whom they had put so much trust. And we can kind of do that in our lives too when we lose those people in our, people in our lives. They were even dejected when the two disciples showed up and recounted their experience 
with Jesus on that walk to Emmaus. Their fear is so much, they think the people who killed Jesus would also come after them. And they're hiding in this upper room. The doors are locked. The lights are low. And they hope no one will find them there. But even through all this effort of theirs to hide away, to turn away, to be in darkness, the light comes from Christ and he shows up in that room. He shows up in the room through a locked door. See, this is where we find the truth of the gospel. It's in this resurrection faith. See, the disciples, they aren't looking for Christ because they think he's dead and buried. And we often do that same kind of thing in our lives when these ills come our way. We, we forget that Christ is out there for us. But see, Christ was looking for them. He is also looking for us. And Christ, he came into their midst. He reveals himself. He reveals himself to the disciples and he has them touch his wounds and his hands so that they'll know that he is not a ghost, that he is real. He even sits and eats with them. And we also get to share in that same thing as we come to the table each week to share with the living Christ, with the living God at his table so that he can become a part of us, a part of who we are. See, in this resurrection faith, there is a mystery that is hard to understand at times. And in the best of times, in what we consider our darkest hours, God reveals himself to us, and it happens in the most unexpected ways even through the locked doors, when we close our own hearts to God, he will reach out to us. And God and Christ, unlike the best individuals we find in our lives, those that we know here in our earthly life, again, God, he will show up in new and in unexpected ways. See, with God, we can be at peace because Christ, through his resurrection, came to save us. He gave us himself that we could move on. And what we have to remember in all of this, it tells us we are not in control of our own lives and our own lives are not guided by what others do. It is in the hands of God. And our call is to only have faith. And what that faith requires of us is what we're hearing today in these readings. It requires us to have a change, a conversion, a change in our hearts to leave behind those things that draw us away from God. You know, we struggle with all of this through the Lenten season, and we wonder why it's coming up again. But see, in this Easter season, we're called to increase that conversion of heart. We have to realize that sin is our reality. And that's what's separating us from God. And even sometimes the little things, such as being dejected and not keeping our focus on him, causes us to turn away. You know, we have to realize that we abuse the freedom that God has given us, this free will. And again, that this sin, it separates us. It plagues us as humans. You know, Isaiah tells us in a verse, he says, the wicked are like the tossing sea, which cannot be still. It cast up mire and mud. See, that's what we do when we don't give ourselves to God, when we try to be the ruler in our own lives, when we don't take on Christ and let him lead us. We have all this mud that's cast up. It covers our eyes. It covers our thoughts. 
we can't see where we're going. But not only that, we hear in the, act, in, a, in the Acts of the Apostles, Peter tells us that we don't only have this willful kind of sin, but we have sin from our own misunderstanding. If you recall, he says, the heart of our eyes, it covers our thoughts, but you acted out of ignorance. See, Christ was put to death when he was trying to help. But they thought he was against them. And it was out of ignorance that he was killed, given up by his own people and given up by the Romans. You know, there's so much confusion in our world about many things, and so our own moral values at times, they can be turned upside down. And it can be very difficult to find and understand where our values should reside in a world that's bombarded by so much information. And so much information that's poured on us, we think that it's right. But again, if we stop and we realize that God is in our lives and we rely on our faith, turning ourselves over to Jesus, then we'll know, as it says in Acts again, that we can repent and be converted, that our sins may be wiped away. And we hear this sentiment in 1 John as well. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but those of the whole world. Yes, Christ comes to us individually, but it's not only for us, it's for all of us, every one of us that God has put here on this earth. And this sin, it can only be remedied through this action of God. And it's found in this resurrection faith of hope, conversion of heart, and sharing the light of life of Christ with others in this world. See, the gospel today tells us that Christ opened the minds of the disciples to understand the scriptures and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations. See, through the grace of God, Christ took on human form, suffered and was resurrected from the dead for our sake that we might have this opportunity to life. God's grace, his freely given unmerited favor, is what will sustain us in times of doubt, confusion, and fear. And how much we respond to God's grace, it will only be to the degree, to the degree which we change our own hearts to loving and caring for each other and loving our God. God's grace, it is working in and through us to help us live the life of Christ always. This grace, it's not a one-time deal. He's there all the time. And we get it through our faithful Christian living, not giving up and knowing that Christ himself never gives up, even in death. He comes back and he walks through the door, through the door of our closed hearts to say, here I am. I'm with you. Hold my hand. The disciples, they had doubts, and we also have these doubts, questions, and fears about things going on around us and in the world. But Christ, he continues to reach out to us appearing when we are, we are at our lowest moments. He just asks us to have faith, to have a conversion of heart, and allow him to illuminate our hearts and our minds. And if we allow this, we'll hear the quieting words that come from him when he walks through the door and he says to us, peace be with you. Amen.
Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Portius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom we have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. And I look for the rest and the life of the world. Jesus is risen because he wants each one of us to be part of God's kingdom. Through him we present our petitions and prayers to God. We pray for the church in many places, which because of COVID restrictions is struggling to celebrate this Easter season as communities, that each member will feel the presence of Jesus close to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Give us the grace to know you as our risen Lord, and may we experience your presence every time we break bread and share our lives with each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who give of themselves so that others may be helped and live a peaceful life, especially the first responders and all those in the military, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who seek happiness, wholeness, and peace, the poor, the sick, the grieving, and the brokenhearted, May their hope in the Lord and the generosity of others towards them never waver. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil leaders and lawmakers, that the light and wisdom of Christ would illuminate, will illumine their decisions and strengthen them to pursue truth and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel bound by their past, imprisoned by this pandemic, or by grief or loss, free them to live more fully, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have recently lost their loved ones, may God console them and grant them peace. And for those who have died, may they celebrate everlasting life in Christ Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our personal intentions and all the needs of all those people who have asked our prayers, we present them to God in silence. Almighty God and Fathers, we continue to celebrate the risen Savior in our midst who gave us the gift of salvation, we pray that each one of us may respond faithfully to his call, that we may be true witnesses to bring peace, love, and justice wherever we are. Grant all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn of preparation will be It Is Well With My Soul. When peace like 
like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Though say should buffet though trial should come let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul, it is well with my soul. Oh, it is well, it is well with my soul. Oh, it is well with my soul. Oh, it is well, it is well with my soul. Oh, it is well with my soul. Yes, it is well, it is well with my soul. dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, as you have given her cause for such great gladness. Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to lord you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, through him the children of, of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic horse Sing together and handing him of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created right gave you praise. 
For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, gracious make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. He did his bread and drink the sun. He proclaimed and death for Lord. Until you come, until you come, until you come again. When we eat this bread and drink the sun, we proclaim. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Anthony, our patron saint, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, gracious, to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as they are passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and you graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a safe sign of the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the man, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
say thanks for the things you've done for me. Things so undeserved, yet you give to prove your love for me. Voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all. God be the glory to God be the glory to God be the glory for the things he has glorify him by our bodies and our lives. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. I have an announcement about uh, 
few changes in terms of our liturgy. We have the guidelines from the diocese. Uh, we are going to open up our church. Uh, uh, we are going to remove those ropes we have, uh, but we are going to have only five, <laughs> five uh, uh, people in the each pew, uh, not more than five. But if you are a family of 10, you can sit in the same pew, doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, but uh, for the couples, I think maybe there'll be just, if you have two couples, maybe one seat. But uh, if it's individuals, uh, it will be five, uh, a maximum. And then we'll bring back uh, the holy water in the fount at the doors. Again, that is up to you. Don't touch the Why do you bring water back further? It's up to you if you want to bless yourself or you don't want. Uh, that's up to each one of us. And we'll bring the miscellate, that will be next uh, Sunday, uh, next weekend, and the hymnal, and also the bulletin. And we'll stop doing the temperature check. There will not be any more. So if you just feel, you're not feeling well, please stay home, because the dispensation from the obligation of mass is still on. It has not been lifted. So if you're at home, don't feel like you have made a, a sin but we encourage that you come to church. And then we'll start also uh, bringing the gifts from back of the church. Uh, that's the horse and uh, everything that's supposed to be brought uh, in front. I don't know if you have missed anything. Do you have any question that I may have missed? Are we comfortable with those changes? Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements, birthdays, anniversaries? Yes. I would just like to thank my church family. The last time I was here, I didn't know what was going on with me, but it was my AC of acting up. And I went in the hospital and they did something to get it back online. So now <laughs> you got now. The Lord be with you. And with your May the Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. We immerse by singing blessings. Sorry, one. sorry, I forgot to mention one important thing. We'll keep on wearing the mask in the church, please. <laughs> We invest by singing, bless that wonderful name of Jesus.
Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Come on in. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. No other name I know. Oh, there is healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Jesus, no other name I know. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. No other name I know. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other, no other, no other name. No other name. No other name. No other, no other name I know. 